You know, one thing you need to know about me is that I possess incredible amounts of empathy. People are like, describe Paraspector, and others will say, empathetic. All Matthew wanted to do was take his cards and go home and eat dinner, but I wouldn't let him. I smoked that kid so many times that his cards started to tear. Alright, so maybe not, but it's time to give myself a little street cred. You see, last time when I beat the Pokemon trading card game using only Paris and Parasect, I made some friends along the way. One in particular is my BFF Matthew. We became best buds, but some people think I was treating him unfairly. So it's time for me to emanate empathy and prove to all of you that I can put myself in Matthew's position. It's time for me to know what it's like to be such a sniveling little rat-faced moron, good-natured kid, and try to beat the Pokemon trading card game using only Matthew's exact deck to the T. It's going to take some effort, but I have to do my research, dot a few I's, and we should be good to go. Why am I doing this? To prove that I'm not a monster, and it gives me an excuse to play through the game again with a relevant challenge. I mean, it was fun beating it with just Paris and Parasect. So firstly, let's see what clever name Matthew has called his deck and dive deep into what Pokemon I'll be using for this challenge. It's time to check out Matthew's hard Pokemon deck. Oh, come on, Matthew. You make it way too easy to make fun of you. Anyway, skip to this point in the video if you don't want to hear me describe his deck. So for something way different from only 8 total grass type Pokemon, this time I'll be using 20 fighting type Pokemon and 1 normal type. So many more options this time. Every one of my fighting types are all weak to grass, so that's the gym that terrifies me this time, the same way that Matthew is terrified of my shroom boys. Let's see who our stars will be. Starting off we have the Geodude line. Matthew uses 4 Geodude, 3 Graveler, and 2 Golem, with these being the focal point of the deck. Geodude kinda blows, actually. It has 50 HP with a retreat cost of 1, and its attack is Stone Barrage for 1 fighting and 1 colorless. Stone Barrage does 10 damage for every coin flip of heads until I get tails. So in theory, Geodude could take out any single Pokemon in one turn, except that demon Mr. Mime. But believe me, in preparation for this challenge, I often wasted so many turns without doing any damage. One tails coin flip and the turn is wasted. Geodude evolves into Graveler, who gets 10 more HP with a retreat cost of 2. For 2 fighting, Graveler can use Harden, which prevents 30 damage on the next turn, and for 2 fighting and a colorless, Rock Throw simply does 40 damage. Much more reliable than Geodude. Graveler finally evolves into Golem, who has a mighty 80 HP and a whopping 4 retreat cost, so he ain't going anywhere. 3 fighting and a colorless does 60 damage with Avalanche, and the fun one is Self Destruct, which demolishes everything. 100 damage to the opponent's Pokemon and 100 to itself, and it does 20 to every benched Pokemon on both sides. This must be used extremely carefully. Next up, Matthew has 3 Onyx, who does not evolve since Steelix is not in this game. Onyx is basically a shield or time waster, has a high 90 HP with a 3 retreat cost, and for 1 fighting I can use Rock Throw for 10 damage, and with 2 fighting Onyx can also use Harden preventing 30 damage on the next turn, which I will probably never use. Onyx is the weak point of the deck, but could help me buy some time if it's an early draw. Next we have the Cubone line, a fan favorite. For some reason, Geodude, Graveler, Golem, and Onyx do not have the resistance to Lightning, but Cubone and Marowak do. They're all ground types, but apparently in the card game, pure ground is all that matters. Basically, they resist 30 damage of Lightning attacks every turn. Cubone is pretty weak with 40 HP and a retreat cost of 1. It has Snivel, which for one colorless energy, 20 damage from the Pokemon it uses it on is prevented on the next turn. Cubone is also a good starting one to use for this reason. For two fighting, it can use Rage, which does 10 damage and 10 more for each damage counter on Cubone. Being able to do up to 40 could come in handy. Cubone evolves into Marowak, but the jungle variant. Thank god because the other Marowak really sucks. Marowak has 60 HP with the same retreat cost, has Bone Meringue for 2 fighting, which does 30 damage for each heads on 2 coin flips. That can be unreliable. For 2 fighting and a colorless, I can use Call for Friend, which allows me to add any basic fighting type Pokemon to my bench. This will either be really helpful or useless depending on the scenario. Finally, the last fighting line is going to be 2 Rhyhorn and 1 Rhydon. Strangely enough, these both get the same lightning resistance as Cubone and Marowak. I don't understand why they all don't have it, but eh, it's not a perfect card game. Rhyhorn is arguably the best starting one. It has 70 HP, but a heavy 3 retreat cost. 
For one colorless, I can use Leer, which prevents all damage on a head's coin flip. Excellent for buying some time. For one fighting and two colorless, Rhyhorn has Horn Attack for 30 damage. Its evolution, Rhydon, is a beast. Rhydon has the highest HP in the deck at 100 with the same 3 retreat cost. Horn Attack is exactly the same as Rhyhorn, but Rhydon gets Ram for 4 fighting. Ram does 50 damage, 22 itself, and forces the opponent to put a benched Pokemon in if the current one survives. The 20 damage to itself hurts, but this could be helpful. The last Pokemon in the deck is one single Snorlax. Snorlax is a beast with 90 HP, a 4 retreat cost, and is a normal type which helps for variety if I'm struggling against grass or flying types with a fighting resistance. Snorlax has the Pokemon power of Thick Skinned, in which it can't be poisoned, paralyzed, confused, or asleep. That is huge. For 4 colorless, its attack is Body Slam, which does 30 and can paralyze with a head's coin flip. It's weak to fighting, but resists Psychic. Snorlax could be very important down the road. Lastly, the deck has 25 fighting energy, so that's simple enough, and the type of energy will never be a problem. The deck has 5 different trainer cards, 3 bills which draws 2 cards, 2 pokeballs which allows me to search the deck for any pokemon with a heads coin flip, 4 defenders which blocks 20 damage on the next turn, 3 gusts of wind which allows me to choose any of the opponent's bench pokemon to immediately go into battle, and 2 potions which heals 20 damage. And that's the entire deck. By far the hard parts will be any grass decks, as all but Snorlax can get hit for double the damage. Also, any flying type decks will be a problem. You see, since fighting, rock, and ground all get grouped into fighting category in the card game, flying types resist attacks from all three of them, even though rock is super effective against flying in the game. I see what they're doing though, because ground can never hit flying and fighting is actually weak against it, but it's yet another flaw in the game. Onyx using Rock Throw against a weak Pidgey will never hit it even though it would be great in the main games. Any Zubat, Golbat, Butterfree, Beedrill, Venomoth, or Scyther will be my deck's kryptonite. Since they are all grass types in the card game, they resist my fighting attacks and do double damage to my peeps. Okay, enough setup, let's see how it goes. Firstly, getting every card in Matthew's deck did take a bit of time, but not really much longer than it took me to get 4 Paris and Parasect last time. Snorlax is the only rare card in the entire deck, and I actually got that in the first pack attempt. In fact, getting the third bill was the last one I needed, and that took many tries. Also, I had to fight a variety of lackey trainers to get certain packs, but I eventually did succeed, and the challenge could now begin. For speed's sake, I won't bother mentioning all of the side trainers I have to fight in order to reach certain club leaders, as they are the ones that matter for this challenge. But just know that I did use Matthew's deck for each of them too, at least after I obtained all the cards. Like with the Paris Parasect challenge, I wanted to start easy and save the rough decks for the end. That's kind of how it goes in the main games too, so it makes sense. Without question, the easiest club for me to dominate is the Lightning Club. I think I called it Electric last time? How stupid of me. Most of the Lightning Pokemon are weak to almost all of my team, and some of mine resist theirs, so it's on to Isaac first, the Clubmaster that took me the most attempts last time. I get a pretty good draw of a Cubone, Marowak, Geodude, and Golem with some energies. I lead off with Cubone getting a Marowak by turn 2, and just as I suspected, this match was incredibly easy, so there really isn't too much to cover here. Marowak resists 30 lightning damage every turn, so Electabuzz paralyzing it was just a stalling tactic. Marowak mostly took everybody out, but I brought in Golem to get the W, since Avalanche does 60 or even 120 damage without fail, as opposed to the unreliable Bone Meringue. Lightning Metal obtained. Next up, I decide to take on my own kind. When I left the Rock Club, I was but the learner. Now I am the master. How will Matthew's cute little hard Pokemon deck fare against the ultimate master of hard himself? Uh, well, easily. Yeah, this was only slightly more difficult than the Lightning one, surprisingly enough. I was almost able to use Rhyhorn the entire battle, but Gene did eventually get a Doug Trio later on, who took out Rhyhorn just before I was going to evolve it into Rhydon. Not a huge issue, as my Graveler and Marowak finished the battle. Well, this is pretty easy so far, although I really suspect that the Grass Club and maybe even the Science Club will give me some trouble. Let's clear out the West Coast next and try Fight Club. Yeah, Fight Club joke, blah blah. Time for Mitch, as portrayed by Edward Norton. I start with a Geodude and a Cubone on reserve, but I also draw a Graveler and a ton of energy. I should have a Graveler by turn 3. 
Mitch opens with a Hitmonlee, who kinda has this scary move of Stretch Kick, which does 20 damage to any of my bench Pokemon. He does this, taking out my innocent Cubone, but, uh, yeah, he only manages to use 2 Hitmonlee and 3 Mankey, and my Graveler wins the entire match without taking any damage. He only hurt my Cubone and Onix through Stretch Kick. So far, all 3 matches have been won in 1 attempt. I did not expect that. Maybe your cards aren't a complete trash fire after all, Matthew. On to the Water Club, which would normally be a disaster for my rock types in basically any Pokemon game, but not in this card game. On to Amy. I get a pretty bad first draw. Too many Pokemon and not enough energy. I decide to go with Cubone since I can at least use Snivel for the time being to prevent some damage. Amy starts with a Horsey who has that annoying smokescreen, which could prevent damage from me on the next turn. After a battle that takes too long, I finally beat Horsey, and she brings in Squirtle who bubbles my poor skull friend to death all while powering up her Lapras. I still am having bad energy luck, so I try to stall longer with a Rhyhorn by using Leer. I do have a Graveler, so if I can get a chance to start getting energies on a Geodude, I could get some steam. But I decide to take my chances by using Horn Attack with Rhyhorn as soon as I can. Then I draw a Golem. It's time to think this over some more. Then she evolves Squirtle into Wartortle, which is not good at all. Bite instantly does 40 damage, so I'm in trouble. I heal Rhyhorn and go for that third energy to use Horn Attack. Gotta get Wartortle down fast. I go for two defenders on Rhyhorn to prevent all damage from Bite on the next turn, so I can at least win the battle over Wartortle. I gotta try and get Golem in there next. I have a gust of wind handy if need be. She brings in Lapras who ends Rhyhorn's life with water from its mouth as I try to stall with a Cubone. Cubone does his best and I get two energies ready for Geodude. I bring in Geodude but instead of trying to waste my time with Stone Barrage, I go for Graveler to use Harden to hopefully get some more energy. Then she evolves her other Wartortle into Blastoise. This is looking bad. Her Lapras and my Graveler take each other down to half health and I use a potion. Lapras goes down and she brings in Sea King instead of Blastoise, but she begins to power it up. Graveler is down to 20 health, but I get an idea. I evolve it into Golem and use Avalanche for 60, as Sea King's Waterfall will not take me out the next turn. Now this is where using Self-Destruct wisely greatly comes in handy. I use a Gust of Wind to blow that Sea King out of the water and bring in that poor Blastoise to take an explosion right to the face. Blastoise has exactly 100 HP, which is what Self-Destruct does. Boom! I blow that golem up, taking out both Blastoise and Sea King, all while hurting both of our benches. She also has a Goldeen and a Squirtle, so 20 damage to them also brings them down to half health. What a turning point. Golem is the real MVP this time. After that, it's simply Rhyhorn against Squirtle, which isn't too much trouble, giving me the final prize. That was awesome. And yet again, another victory in one try. I'm kinda shocked. Next up is Psychic Leader Murray, and this time I'm going in knowing full well of his demon, Mr. Mime. And, uh, yet again, this battle was absolutely nothing. In fact, I only took 10 damage the entire time. I got an early Geodude Graveler combo, and since Murray used mostly normal types, tanks like Chansey, Snorlax, and Kangaskhan were no problem at all. The only time I ever had to put some thought into it was to bring in Cubone against his Mr. Mime. I used Rage for 10, he used Meditate for 10, I used a Defender to prevent damage, I take out Mr. Mime, and have Golem finish the match. I'm starting to feel like this challenge is getting to be too easy. How on earth does this nerd have a deck yielding so many great results? There's still that Grass Club, and even maybe the Science Club, so I won't get too cocky. Fire Club is next, as Ken is the last easier one. He starts out with a Chansey against my Geodude. I forgot how every club leader uses a Chansey in this, but hey, it's good for this deck since it's weak to fighting types. I get a pretty early Graveler, like I have been many times during this playthrough, and he gets another Chansey on top of the one he's powering up. Scrunch makes it so I can't do any damage that turn, and Double Edge Looming is pretty scary. I get a Golem to do some massive damage, but unfortunately, Scrunch was successful and Golem only has 80 HP. That was a mistake on my end. I probably should have used Self-Destruct. Oh well. At least Chansey gets blasted for 80 as well. It's not looking good for old Matty Cakes. Cubone gets absolutely smoked, but at least Chansey takes itself out. All I have left now is a Geodude without energy. I draw an Onyx and a Cubone, and I have a Marowak in my hand, so all is not lost. Stone Barrage does nothing because it sucks, but on my second try, I actually get 3 heads for 60 damage. It is such an inconsistent attack. This is good, because if Chansey uses Double Edge now, it knocks itself out. And this is what happens. Three prizes left, and it's Marowak versus Growlithe. Bone Barang is also pretty inconsistent, and I honestly get some pretty bad coin flip luck, as he keeps using Defenders and healing Growlithe, and I can't seem to get two heads in a row. He starts powering up Magmar, and I get a gust of wind. I decide to act fast and try and get Magmar out. 
He retreats Magmar back, but I eventually take out a couple more Growlithe. One prize left. I start to power up my Snorlax, but I can't seem to take out his last Growlithe. Then he evolves it into Arcanine. Not good. Arcanine takes out my Marowak, but I bring in a stashed Rhyhorn to do some horn attacks. Unfortunately, Arcanine also has Takedown. Takedown does 80 damage to my boys and 30 to itself. We're down to one prize each. I have a Snorlax with two energies and I need four to attack. I have one in my hand. I take a chance on drawing an energy next turn to win the match as another takedown would bring Snorlax and Arcanine down to 10. Then it happens. I do not draw an energy. There's nothing I can do and I take my first Clubmaster loss of the challenge. In retrospect, I probably could have brought Onyx in to do 10 damage, but he would have avoided takedown and just used Flamethrower, so I don't think that would have quite worked. Attempt number two. I start with only one Onyx, but this isn't terrible as he starts with a Jigglypuff with a weakness to my giant rock snake. He retreats and brings in Magmar, who begins to fire punch and flamethrow my Onyx to death. Now all I have is a Geodude. It's looking like this isn't my attempt either, since Stone Barrage is the worst. All I need is two heads here. There's one. Alright, there's two. Awesome. Now I can... Okay. Okay! Geodude, stop! You're killing him! You're killing him with rocks! Wow. A 70 damage turn from Stone Barrage. I draw another Geodude and I have an absolute ton of energy now. He brings in Tauros. Maybe I can get a couple hits in with Stone Barrage again. Jesus! This Geodude is a real one. His bull gets buried under rocks, so Chansey is next. I use Gust of Wind to bring in a lowly Jigglypuff, and Geodude ends up doing 60 on it even. I can't believe this Stone Barrage luck. Chansey comes back, but it's time to allow Geodude to ascend to greatness and become a Graveler. Graveler goes absolutely ham on Chansey, throwing rocks with the fury of a thousand suns. Jigglypuff goes down quick, and I have one prize left. Another Chansey remains, but now I draw a Golem. This Geodude is about to become a god. I could take out Chansey with one avalanche to win the match, but oh no, I choose the fun route. I send my golem over to blow up Chansey right in front of everyone. 200 damage, pieces of rock falling everywhere. That little baby Geodude made me so proud today. I simply had to have him go out with a bang, quite literally. Fire metal obtained, two remain. Here's where it should get tough. Science Master Rick uses a variety of annoying poison type Pokemon, who of course are all grass types in the card game. I need to get good draw luck or rely on my one Snorlax. I draw a Geodude and Rhyhorn first, with not many energies. I start with Geodude, but he gets demolished by Rick's Grimer, who does 20 damage with Nasty Goo and can paralyze. Rhyhorn fares a little better, as I can do 30 each turn with Horn Attack until it goes down. He gets a wheezing pretty quick, but I take that out. He spends time powering up a couple Porygon, which is great for me. I do my best taking out a couple Grimer here and there, and I even get 4 energies on my Snorlax, which is huge. Not only is Snorlax not weak to grass types, but he can't be paralyzed with Nasty Goo. Unfortunately for me, this is where it goes south. He evolves one of his Grimer into Muck, who takes everybody out with Sludge, winning him the match. Attempt number 2. He gets 2 Muck and 2 Mewtwo, how do you think it went? Attempt number 3. I start with an Onix, and he of course gets all of these Grimers, who are just the most annoying Pokemon in the game for this deck. I actually get really close, and I eventually get to use Self-Destruct on his stupid muck, but alas, it's no use. His coughing is too much for my Rhyhorn, and he wins again. Attempt 4. It's Mewtwo versus my one Cubone, who is the only Pokemon I draw. It's over in a minute and a half. Attempt number 5. It's my Onyx versus Coughing, so my plan is to chip away at it with Rock Throw while powering up anyone on the bench. Coughing wins the battle, but I do get him down to 10 HP. All I have left now is a Graveler, thankfully with 3 energy on it. His Grimer could be a problem, so I use Gust of Wind to bring in a Mewtwo of all things, since it isn't able to hit me yet. I do one Rock Throw and one more will take it out, but I take this opportunity to get some more cards by not ending Mewtwo's life just yet. And it starts to work, except it's working for both of us. He gets a fully powered Muck, and I just have a powered up Rhyhorn. That isn't going to quite cut it. I do something crazy though. Instead of taking out Mewtwo, I use another Gust of Wind to bring in that Muck to do an instant 40 damage and use a Defender. Muck can't knock Graveler out in one turn, but if I hold off a Poison, I make Muck faint next turn. And this plan works. It works so well that my next draw is a Golem who takes down Muck in one hit. Then the injured Mewtwo, then a different Mewtwo, then Porygon, and finally his last coughing, giving me the Science Medal. Freaking finally. God, Matthew, you are just the worst. One medal left, and it's a scary one. Let's just go in and see if I can do it in less than five attempts like this one. 
Beating the three grassy ladies was surprisingly easy. First try for each of them. On to Nikki. She literally wins using only two Oddish, and I didn't take either of them out. She retreated one. If I'm struggling against Oddish, that's a bad sign. Attempt number two. Nikki manages to get two Venusaur, a Vileplume, and an Executor. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of bad. Although I kind of managed to hold my own for a little bit there. Venusaur's energy transfer ability is too good though, so she was able to power up anyone at any time. I also made a stupid decision to use self-destruct way too early to take out Venusaur. Executor simply finished the job easily. Attempt number three. I draw two Geodude who don't manage to do any damage to her one Oddish. Match over. Attempt number four. I draw a Geodude and a Snorlax and a ton of energy. The obvious move is to start with Geodude to power up Snorlax. Geodude was a sacrifice that the island demanded. She starts with an Oddish, just like every other attempt, so I get to work on those four energies on Snorlax. And it starts to work. Geodude goes down as planned, as I'm not about to Stone Barrage this time around, and it's time for Snorlax to shine. She gets a Gloom pretty quick, which doesn't phase me, as Snorlax can't be poisoned. She starts to build a bench of Bulbasaur and Execute, soon becoming Ivysaur and Executor. Meanwhile, I begin to build on a different Geodude to eventually get a Golem. Ivysaur goes down and I use a Gustwind to chip away at Executor, since Gloom is of no threat. Executor goes down, but she turns that Gloom into a Vile Plume. Not good. She uses Petal Dance with all three heads, doing a whopping 120 damage to my MVP Snorlax. However, Vile Plume is the only Pokemon she has left, so all I need to do is send my rock creature doused in gasoline to send this flower to the compost pile, giving me my final medal. It's kind of funny that it took me more tries against the Science Club, but I only managed to win this round because of an early Snorlax with energies. Although Golem was the one who delivered the final blow. But I did it! Only the Grandmasters await. Overall, I'm pretty impressed with old Matthew and his hard Pokemon. They did okay. Time to do what I can against the Grandmasters. I'm a little concerned as all three legendary birds will resist my fighting dudes, so I gotta act fast. First up is Courtney's Legendary Moltres deck. I get an atrocious draw. One Snorlax, a bunch of fighting energy, and a Pokeball that ultimately fails. And she gets to go first. So Snorlax will have to take five hits before I can even attack once with nobody on reserve. This is bad. She starts with a Magmar, who, as predicted, begins to chip away at Snorlax immediately. I do eventually get a Geodude, Graveler, and Golem in the meantime, but by this point Courtney has powered up two Moltres and a Ninetales. Golem is one of the only ones on my team who can hurt Moltres, so once I lost him, it's all uphill from here. I lose, but I actually get close to decking her. She wins with only 12 cards left. If I get real lucky, or unlucky I guess, at least that's an option. Moltres with that Fire Giver ability did clear out 8 cards from her deck this round. Attempt number 2. Drawing a Snorlax as the only first Pokemon is bad, only one Onix is probably the next worst. Onix vs Magmar is doable, but so annoying with Smokescreen. Magmar does 10 every time, and I only do 10 50% of the time. Also, while powering up my Geodude to get Golem out, I accidentally added an energy to Onix instead. That was dumb. Naturally, I lose this one, but I at least get to blow up Moltres. Attempt number 3. I draw an Onyx and Rhyhorn, which is decent, so I go with Rhyhorn to utilize Leer against her Growlithe. I get a Geodude with a Golem in hand as well. Growlithe goes down, but I get a pretty injured Rhyhorn in the process. Next is this real Chad Magmar with its annoying smokescreen, so I'll do my best. I get a successful Pokeball, but instead of going for Graveler, I take a chance and get Rhydon right away to do some instant big damage with a gust of wind. I get to work on the two energy Growlithe before it becomes an Arcanine. Then she plays her just so super awesome Moltres with Fire Giver, of course getting four fire energies, retreats the injured Growlithe, and brings in Magmar. Come on. But then something weird happens. She retreats Magmar and brings in that Moltres with no energies. Uh, okay, Courtney, you do that. I would have done that myself if I had a gust of wind anyway. The downfall is that Horn Attack cannot hit Moltres due to its resistance, and Ram will only do 20 damage while also doing 20 to ride on itself. I use a Defender to assure that I do 20 to Moltres without getting hurt, since I literally only have a handful of Pokemon that can even do damage to Moltres. She gets an Arcanine, but uses a Switch to bring in the Energyless Moltres again? What is she doing? Rhydon is at half health, so I need to get a Graveler quick. I get another Defender, so I can do another safe 20 damage. In comes Arcanine. I choose to ram it for 50, taking the hit, and she brings in Moltres from it yet again. This is where I choose to use this time to leave Moltres in to get some energies, power up my new Snorlax, and try to get a Graveler to finally play my Golem. 
We do a few actionless turns, and I do it. I draw a Graveler. I get a little nervous because she starts to put energies on the Moltres. I gotta stall a little longer to try and have access to a powered up Golem and Snorlax. Moltres's attack is Dive Bomb, which does 70 but only with a Heads coin flip. I get real lucky and avoid a hit the first time. I ram it and she brings an Arcanine to finish off Rhydon. Luckily, Golem can end this pup's earthly time in this match in one shot. Moltres comes in and dive bombs Golem right away. Bam! Down to 10 HP. Now I could use Avalanche to bring Moltres down to 10 and bank on it missing dive bomb next turn, but that's not how I roll. Boom! Golem blows up right in Moltres' beak and fire wings, also hurting everyone else. Ninetales is next, and I could start clearing it away with my powered up Snorlax, but I decide to let Onyx take some hits since I'm leading in prizes. Ninetales has Dancing Embers, which does 10 damage for each head's coin flip on 8 coin flips. Onyx goes down to 20 HP. I do a measly rock throw for 10, and something incredibly lucky happens. Ninetales gets only 1 heads out of 8 coin flips. Crazy bad odds of that happening. I use Gust of Wind to take in the injured Growlithe, which leaves me with two prizes left. Onyx goes down and I choose to still wait on Snorlax and bring in Cubone, who becomes a Marowak. I get, yet again, really good luck from Dancing Embers, and Marowak survives, who takes out Ninetales. One prize left. Magmar takes out Marowak, so it's time to bring in the big boy. All of a sudden, she retreats Magmar, brings in Arcanine, who does takedown, knocking out Snorlax just like that. She now only has one prize left as well. I bring in a little baby Onyx as it's the only one who could survive a takedown. All that happens is she uses takedown doing 30 damage to her Arcanine, leaving it at only 10 HP, which is exactly what my Onyx does to win the match. That could not have gotten any closer. Also, all she had to do was use two flamethrowers instead. Flamethrower makes her discard a fire energy, but she had enough, so I win thanks to some jilted AI. Am I proud of it? Heck yes I am. Next up is Steve with the Legendary Zapdos deck. This one should be the easiest by far, but not a given. The majority of his team should be weak to fighting Pokemon, except for Zapdos, who not only isn't weak, but resists fighting. I start out with a Cubone, who actually takes out his Voltorb, Eevee, and Electabuzz with little problem. But he brings in the scary Zapdos, the one who does 30 damage to one of mine just by placing it on the bench. He draws another different Zapdos too, but I draw a Rhyhorn with Rhydon and energies in my hand already. This is good news. Cubone does his best by being able to do 10 damage a turn on Zapdos with Rage, since Cubone has 3 damage counters on it. Eventually, he gets enough energy on Zapdos, who has Big Thunder. Big Thunder does 70 to 1 at random. Good god. The best possible option is the one who takes the hit, my poor Onyx. Sorry about that, my friend. This tells me to evolve my Geodude and Rhyhorn immediately so you don't get knocked out. I do so and get my Rhydon about ready for battle. Again, the best possible scenario happens, and Cubone is the one who gets hit by Big Thunder. You did great, little buddy. See ya on the other side. Thankfully, Zapdos is down to 60 HP, though. Time for Rhydon to flex a little. I use Ram to do 20 to each of us, forcing him to bring in someone else. He chooses the other Zapdos with no energy, but starts to work on that. Oh no, I want that other Zapdos back in. I gust to win that bird out of there, forcing the other Zapdos to get hit for 20 more and be taken out again. I somehow have three gusts of wins, so I do this a second time to make sure that one Zapdos is gone. Rammed to death. I get a potion and defender to help avoid some more ram damage. And this is kind of weird. So defender actually works on both turns, I didn't know this. So I avoid self damage from ram, and also with my lightning resistance, I avoid all damage from Zapdos' thunderstorm, which is kind of complicated. It does 40 to ride on, which becomes zero. Then a coin is flipped for each of my bench Pokemon. For each heads, they get hit for 20, and Zapdos takes 10 to itself. After this happens twice, it actually helps me out. My Golem and Cubone each get hit once, so Zapdos goes down to 20 HP, the exact amount I can do with a Ram. I use Ram to take down Zapdos with one prize left, but because I have a gust of wind left, it's all over. All I gotta do is bring in the cute little Voltorb to take a pounding, giving me the win. Only three matches left to succeed in the challenge. Well, technically four. Jack's legendary Articuno deck is up, so I gotta deal with that final batch of these birds I can barely hit. Cubone vs Chansey starts it off, and I get Marowak on turn 2, who actually takes Chansey out in one hit with Bone Meringue. Awesome. Then it all goes south here with Articuno coming in. I can only do damage with Marowak if I get two heads in a row, so Marowak is incredibly unreliable here. Articuno wipes out the rest of my team pretty easily. Attempt number 2. 
Also, I want to be honest with you all here, since I am turning over a new leaf and all, but I am using safe state here to try these matches over if I lose. Typically you would need to start over for any losses, but I wouldn't normally be using 95% fighting types during these matches. You can say I didn't properly complete the challenge if you want, but I still am defeating each Grandmaster with this deck only. Comment below if you think I'm a fraud. I get a Rhyhorn and a Geodude at the start, so I go with Rhyhorn of course. Leer can be very helpful at the start. I managed to get enough fight energies to use Horn Attack pretty fast to make quick work of these chances he insists on using. Lapras comes in and tries some shifty Confuse Ray garbage, but I draw a Pokeball and... Success! I get a Rhydon and can run the table on this fool now. And surprisingly, I do. Rhydon wins the entire match on its own, Horn Attacking Chansey, Seal, and Ditto and ramming Lapras right off the map. He actually does get an Articuno on the bench, but it's too late for him by that point. It makes such a difference when they get the birds out. A surprisingly easy win. Only Emo Rod and Derpy Rondler are left. Time for Rod's Legendary Dragonite deck, even though Dragonite is not legendary or even cool. I get one lone Geodude against two Charmander. I'm already expecting a loss because it's Geodude. I get Charmander down to 10. He evolves into the Charmeleon match over. Yeah. Attempt number two. I get another pretty bad draw of only two Onyx. At least it gives me time to obtain more cards. The thing with his deck is that it's centered around Gyarados, Dragonite, and Charizard, who all resist fighting. So I must act fast or else it's way too tough to catch up. And what do you know, he gets all three. Attempt number three. This one is a weird one. I get an average draw of a Rhyhorn and Geodude. My plan is to start with Rhyhorn, use only one energy to buy some time with Leer, and then hopefully find a Graveler, as I also have a Golem in my hand. He starts with Lapras, which isn't very good for me. Confused Ray is pretty annoying. Rhyhorn holds on for a few turns, but I obviously didn't do any damage, and all I have left now is a single Geodude. I'll do what I can with Stone Barrage, and... Oh, cool! Yeah, maybe this isn't my round. But just when all hope is lost, I manage to draw a Graveler next, which gives me a full-powered Golem in two turns. I take Lapras out in two hits just like that, and to be completely honest, he doesn't really put up much of a fight the rest of the battle. He never gets a Gyarados, Dragonite, or Charizard, although he does come close with a Charmeleon, and Gola manages to wipe out his whole team except for me having to bring in Snorlax to finish the job. A bit anticlimactic really, but I'll take it. Ronald is the final battle. The scary thing about Ronald this time around is not only his face, but that he has the four legendary cards that I made fun of last time. This time, though, all four of them resist fighting attacks, so I basically need to rely on Golem, Rhydon, or Snorlax to deal with them. So remember in part one with my Paris and Parasect team, I actually managed to win the battle against Ronald by decking him. I don't see that happening again since I can't really stall with Mysterious Fossils this time, but let's see how it goes. I start with drawing only one Onyx. Yikes. It's Onyx against Kangaskhan, but at least Kangaskhan has a weakness, so I can do 20 each turn instead of 10. He can also draw cards with fetch each turn, so I need to act accordingly. I hit him once and use a gust of wind for Dratini with a double colorless energy, because if he gets a quick Dragonite, it's over for me. But he places an Articuno with the Pokemon power Quick Freeze, which, when placed, can automatically paralyze my Pokemon with a heads coin flip. And as luck would have it, he uses a scoop up twice to bring it back, and my Onyx gets paralyzed three turns in a row. On top of that, he evolves the Dratini I tried to take out into Dragonair. What a schmuck. In the meantime, at least I get a Rhyhorn with a Rhydon on standby, and a Snorlax, so I do my best to power them up. Then Ronald turns into a complete mad lad, using Professor Oaks and Bills and getting Moltres, Articuno, and Dragonite. I use Rhydon to try and inflict some damage with Ram on his team as much as I can until Moltres gets a successful dive bomb, knocking my Rhydon into the earth and soil. All I have left now is a half-powered Snorlax. But I also have my secret weapon card handy, a gust of wind. I also see Ronald is already down to 25 cards in his deck, so I figure maybe if I bring in Kangaskhan, he will use fetch to lower that deck even more. Then all in one turn he uses a bill, places another Moltres with Fire Giver, and uses fetch. He's down to 20 cards just like that. Maybe I can win this by decking him. But he also starts to put energies on Kangaskhan, so this could be bad. I get a Geodude for some insurance, and he uses another bill, but also a double colorless energy on Kangaskhan getting him to full power. Comet Punch only does 20 damage out of 4 coin flips, so Snorlax is still in good shape. I have another Gust of Wind handy, so I blow Kangaskhan away and bring in a powerless Articuno. I can't attack yet, and neither can he, so I'm just having him draw more and more cards. 
The dude uses yet another bill, making me winning by him running out of cards actually the likely scenario at this point. I get my fourth energy so I can at least start doing some damage just in case, but I want to leave Articuno in there as long as possible. Turns keep going by and he's down to only four cards in his deck and he's not doing anything at all. I still have all six prizes left too. He continues doing nothing with two cards left, so a victory is a certainty for me at this point. Just for funsies, I body slam Articuno. He brings in Kangaskhan and I say, why not? Retreat Snorlax and bring in Golem to go out with a mighty bang. Blow! Golem blows himself up in all of his self-destruction glory, absolutely smoking Kangaskhan into oblivion and hurting all of our teams in the process. Ronald goes to draw a card, but oh no, he's out. What a pear-shaped loser. Wow, both challenges won with Ronald running out of cards. I think he needs to rethink his strategy because that's pretty embarrassing. And speaking of embarrassing, I did it! I beat the Pokemon trading card game using only my Nemesis Matthews deck. Once again, I won those sought after legendary cards that I plan to put out my cigarette on as I walk out of the hall with my head held high, rocking the deuces. I weirdly think this challenge was both easier and more frustrating than the Paris and Parasect one. The thing with my Mushroom Boys is that Pokemon don't resist grass, yet a lot resist fighting. So if I encounter any flying types, Onix and Rhyhorn are completely useless. I need a lot of circumstantial luck for Cubone, Marowak, or Geodude to do any damage, thus relying on Rhydon, Graveler, Golem, and Snorlax, all of which require a lot of energies, and two of them do damage to themselves. But as far as the standard battles went, yeah, this wasn't too bad and actually kind of fun. I liked having a very specific set of cards to use, as modifying my deck was something I never had to worry about once I got them all. I didn't even bother looking at packs that I won or emails from the professor at all. It was minimalistically liberating. But you know, I truly don't feel like this challenge is done quite yet. How can I possibly end this challenge without laying the smack down on the very child I've been impersonating? It's hard Pokemon versus hard Pokemon and only one shall prevail. Oh, hello, Matthew. A battle, you say? <laughs> we both start out with one Cubone each. Naturally, we both use Snivel over and over and over while each powering up our benches. Finally, he decides to cave in and retreat and bring in his stupid Onyx. Okay, Matthew, you do that. I evolve my superior Cubone into Marowak, who of course can't finish the job with Bone Ring. He also gets a lame Rhydon, so I try using a Gust of Wind to do some damage with Bone Ring, which fails miserably. Rhydon somehow takes out my Marowak. I bring in my Golem, use two Defenders, and use an Avalanche on Rhydon. He predictably uses Ram, bringing him down to 20 HP, so I test my Stone Barrage luck, and yeah, it works. It fared better than Bone Ring did. He brings in his inferior Cubone, so I evolve Geodude into Graveler, getting my second prize. His awful Geodude goes down, and then he does some real crafty stuff like using a gust of wind to make me bring in Snorlax, who surely can't retreat. Come on, Matthew. This is why nobody likes you. I painfully wait as his weak Onyx defeats my Snorlax, but with much excitement and per my MO, I bring in Golem to absolutely explode for the final time, blowing up each individual rock segment on Onyx. Matthew is defeated and a surprise to nobody, and I feel pretty proud of myself defeating this poor kid yet again. What do you have to say after that beatdown, Matthew? Wow, so that's the strength of the legendary Pokemon cards. <sighs> Matthew, you don't even know what just happened, do you? I did this entire challenge trying to prove that Matthew isn't the soy boy that everybody thinks he is, and then he goes and says that. No, Matthew, that was not the strength of the legendary Pokemon cards. They were your cards. I can't with this kid anymore. No. You know what? I'm just gonna walk away. I'll let Matthew go home for dinner this time. I have to be the better person. I think it's time to go for a walk. Oh, hello, Nicholas. Open your eyes, Nicholas. Ah!